Another day, another video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're watching the Big Man Theory. This is our 20th episode of the second season. Hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. If you like this episode, this is available for free in the link in the description below. Just clicking it, put a password in, and enjoy. But last episode was quite fun, actually. I did enjoy it. It's been a pretty good ride, uh, uh, the final few, anyway. And, um, you know, we had Sheldon struggling to make a decision. Does he choose a PlayStation 4? Does he choose an Xbox One? You know, indecisive, back and forth, back and forth for all the pros, for all the cons. He sat in the store. He ended up not even being able to make the decision and the store closed while he was sat in there. We had uh, Penny, you know, she was again back and forth, back and forth. Should I take this role in the sequel to the movie that she already starred in? Turns out, yeah, why not? Do you know what I mean? She's gone for it, which is good stuff, you know. She was speaking to uh, Leonard. He was giving her some advice. Then he went to speak to Will Wheaton. He then gave her some bad advice. He was basically saying, look, you know, sometimes you're in great films, sometimes you're in crap ones. You know, um, it's just how you deal with it. And also, if it pays the paycheck, you know what I mean? If it gets the bill sorted, then sometimes you got to take what you've been given. And I'm glad that she's actually gone for it. And I said it'd be really good to see if we could get a trailer for it or some of the movie being shown in a future episode because at the end of it, you know, when she was there, she was getting dressed up in a costume. You know, we was told earlier in the episode that there was a scene between her and the ape where she was in a bikini, the ape was in a bikini, and he was fighting each other. Well, we seen her getting prepped and ready. She was in a bikini. She was getting her uh, gorilla hands on. Then, obviously, we went over and, uh, you know, the gorilla or whatever ape come in. And, uh, interestingly, it was Will Wheaton. Yes, you know what I mean? So, two of the friends are there. Um, you know, on the same set together. Hopefully, it makes her feel better, gives her a bit more confidence, and, uh, you know, she has a good experience where she wants to do it again and again and again. And then we also had Raj, who actually met up with the girl that he actually seen in the coffee shop, you know, when he was with Amy. Uh, they bumped into each other. She actually was like, oh, do you know what? I'll give you a second chance. He's gone down. He's nailed it. They've gone on a date. And, uh, you know, Lucy was texting him as well and asking him to see him. And he was kind of conflicted. Should I go out with her? Should I go out with, uh, you know, this new girl? He ended up telling her um, and being open and honest. And she kind of understood it and liked it. And she didn't actually walk away. And it seemed to be going really well. So, Altogether, an upbeat, interesting, good episode, and hopefully today carries on as well. Thanks for checking it out. If you do enjoy it, please smash the like, really helps out. Subscribe if you're new, and as always, let's jump into today's episode. <laughs> you the more i read about the primordial gravity wave discoveries the more excited i get this may be the biggest scientific breakthrough of our lifetime how can you as a theoretical physicist not care about this yeah what i'd like to know is how does this gravity wave breakthrough help the man on the street oh my god you're jealous the higgs field just got proven and you've been working on string theory for the last 20 years and you're no closer to proving it than when you started <sighs> sorry for eavesdropping but there actually was some big string theory news today out of the hadwan kawaita Really? No, but they did find evidence that you'll believe anything. You're a string theorist as well. Incorrect. I am a swing pragmatist. I say I'm going to prove something that cannot be proved. I apply for grant money, and then I spend it on wicker and boards. I'm wasting my life on a theory that can never be proven? Maybe, but how great is Game of Thrones? <laughs> up to the final season it's absolutely top tier probably one of the top three of all time but the question is again i know we talk about science and i have li literally no knowledge of it and that we've mentioned about these guys before being paid to technically not really do anything just to prove other people's work and i was like so what do they do all day every day you guys have obviously been answering that but my question again will be in relation to their jobs is string theory clearly somebody's come up with this theory before and that's why these guys are sat down and trying to prove it. But it must have some weight to it. You know what I mean? So the first person that ever, you know, created a theory of string theory, like, must have had some sort of evidence, some sort of background. And some of it must have come true for people to be like, yo, that actually makes a lot of sense. We've had some of it proved right before. We need to look into that and see if the rest of it's okay. Do you know what I mean? Or, like, surely string theory that Sheldon's spending all his life trying to do as well as many other physicists, you know what I mean, like, throughout the whole entire world for many years, I've not been doing it just off the whim. They've got to be some sort of background that they're like, yeah, that makes total sense. Let's see if that actually makes sense compared to just somebody saying something and then everybody running to see if it, it's true. I hope that comes across right. If not, I do apologise. But, you know what I mean, there should be some sort of weight from the first guy that ever created it as a bit of evidence for them to say, yo, this guy made sense on half of this stuff. Let's figure out if the other half is true. Couldn't sleep. I told you those Walking Dead pillowcases were a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
that's not it. I've devoted the prime of my life to string theory and its quest for the compactification of extra dimensions. I've got nothing to show for it, and I feel like a fool. I know what it's like to put your heart and soul into something and get nothing out of it. In your acting career, your relationship with Leonard, your failed attempt to go back to college. No! <laughs> I'm saying, you and string theory sound like a relationship, and I know what it's like to be in one and realize it's never gonna turn out the way you want. You have to have the courage to end the relationship, you know? Break it off, shake hands, walk away. Betty, have you seen my good inhaler? Break it off, shake hands, walk away. <laughs> When I was honest and told Emily she wasn't the only person I was seeing, it went great. So I tried this ending with Lucy. She had mixed feelings. But when I said Emily was cool with it, Emily's the best, why can't you be more like Emily? <coughs> Those feelings became less mixed. Get to meet her as soon as possible. Why the rush? She isn't going anywhere. Oh, she is, but I like that attitude. Penny pointed out that what I'm going through is essentially a breakup. And according to Cosmopolitan magazine, one of the most effective techniques for moving on is to get rid of all reminders of the relationship. There's an article on how to get over a breakup in literally every issue. It's going to be okay. I know. As hard as this is, I have to move on. I can't keep postulating multidimensional entities and get nothing in return. It needs to. <laughs> for Roger's face. The thing is with Sheldon is, you know, it kind of goes to what I was saying last episode in the fact that would you rather get $50,000 for a job that you didn't like doing or $35,000 for a job that you absolutely loved doing? And obviously I said all day, every day, pick the, the lesser. Now with Sheldon is, he just loves doing science. I know that he's not done anything because he's not, you know what I mean? He's not sold anything. So like he's saying, he's pretty much just been doing it all his life and he's not really made or, or, or achieved or, or found anything. So he kind of now starting to feel like a bit of a failure. But at the end of the day, he's on the side of, mate, he loves doing what he's doing. And he probably doesn't even do it for the money. Yeah, he's probably on good money. But, like, I bet you if you took money away from Sheldon, he would still be interested in being a physicist. You know, he would still love what he's doing and still research it. And he'd do it in his spare time. You know what I mean? Like, that's because of it's a subject that he's got all his attention for. So, I don't know. I don't think that will obviously last for Sheldon moving on. I feel like it's a topic that he absolutely loves and he'll just keep doing it. It's not a relationship that he can walk away from because it's something that he's passionate about and he loves doing. It's just obviously the realisation that sometimes something's not going nowhere can be a bit daunting. But at the end of the day, it can go somewhere if he proves it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's always that what if. Like right now he's been doing it for so long, but like what if he found a breakthrough today? It would have made all of his life worth it. Do you know what I mean? Everything, even on his last dying breath, do you know what I mean? If he found something out, his whole life up until that moment, working to find, you know, proof or whatever, would have been all uh, worthwhile. So I don't know. I feel like it'll be, it's just like a little episode of where like he, he wants to make a change and then he realizes, nah, I want to go back and do this again. I spoke to Bernadette. She's free tomorrow night. Oh, okay, great. If we're really gonna do a double date, then we have to go over some ground rules about Emily. Like, when it turns out she's made of rubber, I don't say anything? See? This is exactly the kind of thing I'm worried about you saying in front of me. I promise I'll be on my best behavior. You got it. No jokes about the year I took ballet. You took ballet. But you never listen. Like, the magazine article suggests that one of the ways to get over a breakup is a new look. What about your old look? Well-groomed ventriloquist style. So, how do you want me to cut it? How about Bill Gates meets Nikola Tesla? Do a good job, and I'll tell you Cosmo's 10 dynamite tips to enjoy your PMS. So now that you're no longer invested in string theory, what are you going to pursue? Dark matter. Oh, Leonard was telling me about dark matter, but I didn't really understand it. Don't feel bad. Neither does he. What do you think? <laughs> it doesn't look bad. It just looks strange. Have you ever even seen a picture of Tesla? <laughs> what did you do? I gave him a new look. It's cute, huh? Yeah, it's cute. That's the problem. I don't need other girls to see him walking around like sex on a stick. <laughs> She's right. I'm too hot. She might have like, you know, what's what's that like where you say something and makes him go back to the way it was just because you didn't like it the first time, but it made him think it was their idea. That's what she done there. Also, um, they made a comment. What oh, did they just say then? Actually, oh, that matter. I'm pretty sure there's a TV show out right now, maybe from Apple, that's called Dark Matter. It's supposed to be really good, actually, and really interesting. Maybe we go and watch that and see what uh, what the crack is and see um, some more scientific stuff. It's like black holes where you go in and come out the other side and stuff like that. It sounds like he be thinks that something's happened in his life and it's him from the future or the past that's messing with it. I'm excited to meet Emily. Me too. I just hope he doesn't blow it. Beckham can bend it, Ralph can wreck it, Raj can blow it. Oh, crap, I know that girl. Oh, 
What, in a bad way, very bad. <laughs> Guys, this is Emily. Nice to meet you. Hi. Uh -huh. Have we met before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think so. A total stranger. <laughs> Even if you had yummy candy, I would not get in your van. Did you go to that spin class on Green Street? That must be it. Since when do you go to spin class? Wow, now who doesn't listen? Why do we have a geology book? You, Leonard, did you throw a children's party while I was in Texas? Put this in a way you'll understand, Penny. You remember how you explained to me that the Kardashians aren't real celebrities? Well, geology is the Kardashians of science. You want me to give up string theory for something that's less advanced? You know, why don't you break up with Penny and start dating a brown bear? Make your new field of study the calculation of nuclear matrix elements. Oh, please. I wanted to take up a fad and get a tramp stamp. I hope he's this distraught if he ever breaks up with me. Well, if he does, I'll see if my bear has a friend. Why don't you take your time, enjoy your freedom? Maybe something new to study will find you. You know, I didn't seek out string theory. It just hit me over the head one day. A bully chased me through the school library and hit me over the head with the biggest book he could find. Normally, I refrain from alcohol, but since my cerebral cortex is twiddling its proverbial thumbs, why not soak it in grape juice that's been pre-digested by a fungus? No, I know you from somewhere. Oh, uh, Howard was an astronaut. Maybe that's why you saw him. Wow, that's amazing. What was that like? <laughs> Up there in the space station. You're oh, my God, I remember. Four years ago. Please don't say it. We were set up on a blind date. Please don't say it. You came to my apartment. You're saying it. Away to pick her up. My stomach felt a little funny. One roll of toilet paper and 20 minutes later, I was so humiliated, I stuck out the window and never saw her again. Sorry, I tried to unclog it, but you didn't have a plunger and water was filling out everywhere. Right, just water. All my friends love this story. They call you Clogzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Because you clogged up a bathroom like a radioactive monster. <laughs> no, it was actually not that bad. It's not like cotton candy comes out of you. Actually, it wasn't that bad, actually. I thought it was going to be a date story where, like, they may have had sex with each other or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But, like, yeah. Fiddling, blocking a toilet. Okay, although it's embarrassing, you know, it could have been way worse in terms of the uh, what happened between them, and it could have been more awkward. I mean, between Howard and, and Raj, no awkwardness at all. Like, literally, it's just a story that he can point fun and laugh at him at, to be honest. And maybe he offers to give her a bit of money or something for the cost of repairs. You know, he says she didn't get a deposit. Uh, sometimes people hold on to things. She may just need a bit of closure. She seems it's got it done. But I don't know. I, don't, I was expecting something really bad and it wasn't. So, I mean, I think it's easy to get past that one. I've had a lot to drink. No more than Penny. That's what I'm saying. Empty room. Empty room. Empty room. So, Emily, why did you decide to specialize in dermatology? I like cutting people with knives and all the other jobs where you get to do that are illegal. <laughs> She's scary, but it's a cute scary. <laughs> we had some kind of food poisoning, but I think we can all understand how humiliating that was, and I'd really appreciate it if we could move on. Yeah, well, you moved on a long time ago. I'm just saying. You moved on. How's your soup? Uh, it's all right. I could have filled the bowl a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? I need some fresh air. Been there. <laughs> oh, do you reckon Amy's going to be there? He's not going to remember either because he was drunk. Done. She's not there. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I feel it. So good. Are you gonna introduce me to your friend? It's not my friend. Yeah, nothing happened. I don't know. I heard you reading pretty loud last night. I should call her and apologize. Apparently, I called Stephen Hawking last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's your old buddy, Keldonoscopy. I had a bit of an embarrassing evening. I drank alcohol and may have left an unfortunate voicemail for Stephen Hawking. Turns out I'd already met the girl Raj is seeing when I did a number on her bathroom. Hey, Koopa! Oh. I heard you drunk dialed Stephen Hawking last night? Get out of here, Barry. <laughs> Whatever you say, Wogzilla. Hogzilla, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Next message is me again. I gave up string theory. Do you know what's great? 
Geology. Geo. <laughs> Geo. Hey, guess who I am? Beep bop boop bop. I'm you. Get it? <laughs> oh, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he's proper on a drunk dial in here. <laughs> Jack and he's not friends with him anymore. You know what stressed me out about that? The fact that Stephen Hawking was right above the push plate instead of being in the centre of the door. Like, that location is, like, absolutely random. Uh, but also, you know, Sheldon's on a proper junk dial there. Uh, I understand calling him maybe one time, but, like, seven times? Mate, that is literally pestering, isn't it? Also, do you ever listen to your voicemails? Because I don't. Like, literally, I've probably got 20 unread voicemails. If you li I personally think that, like, if it was somebody that wants you, then they just text you and say, call me back. You know what I mean? So, like, if I called somebody two times and he didn't answer, just drop a text, say, call me back when you're free. Like, I wouldn't leave a voicemail, like, yeah, can you call me back when you're free? And that, I just, you know what I mean? I, and I also feel like if somebody actually really wanted me, just call me again, you know? I never listen to voicemails. Uh, apologies to anyone that actually leaves one. I just don't. Like, <laughs> I can't be bothered sitting there and, and going through it. I just feel like if it was important, they'd ring back. And if they, they wanted something brief, they'd just text. Uh, so they probably use most... I bet most people's phones are, are clogged up with, you know, stuff like that. And talking about clogging up, where, uh, you know, Raj's new girlfriend uh, went on a date with uh, Howard, who actually, you know, number two in a bathroom, blocked it, ruined it backdoored it like Lucy out the window so uh he was obviously all um kind of embarrassed and kind of awkward all episode uh Harvard to be honest and I actually don't think it was a big deal at the time that situation when he clogged the toilet he probably would have been panicking and backdoored it and felt bad for her but like I don't know time passed four years I think she said and it's just a situation where you could just turn back and laugh at it it's not as if like he'd done anything hurtful to her personally and um it's not as if they fell out you know um, in a situation where they was both nasty to each other, just kind of like an embarrassing scenario that he was involved in, and then obviously he's just kind of can't, ran away, you know what I mean? So, I mean, they've used it to pick and laugh at him and make a few jokes this episode, which is fine, you know what I mean? Kind of warrants it, to be honest, but um, didn't go too bad. I thought it was going to be much worse, and it was just minor, and, uh, you know, seemed like Raj and her are getting along, to be honest, so, you know, even though it didn't go well for Howard, it doesn't really matter. He's got a wife and burned it already. Do you know what I mean? So big up, um, you know, Raj for going on a successful date and having fun and didn't take things too serious as well. So that's good stuff. Hopefully we see more of them going forward. Okay, yeah, that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks so much for checking out the channel today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So, you know, Sheldon's hit a wall in today's episode. I feel like we've had this before where he's figuring out that, like, his work's not going in the path that he really wishes it to go to. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's, uh, he feels like string theory um he's no closer to it than when he was younger and uh, he spent all his life's work trying to pursue something that may never actually be proven and then obviously it's kind of made him think what am i doing here should i move on into like a different field and you know i'd be interested to see if we do have a bit of continuity in the show in terms of him actually not doing his work or is he going to just go back tomorrow you know what i mean is he going to change his mind because you know something that i was thinking about is say if he was pursuing something like if he was really clever like sheldon for example would you be happy with pursuing something that's really difficult to pursue and never really achieving it or, or, or dropping yourself down a level to something a bit more simpler and being the best in that field? And like the only way I could kind of say, um, you know, a bit easier to understand would be if you as an athlete, you know, would you rather play for the, the best team um, against all of the harder teams in, in the world and like always be like, five out of ten you know what i mean you're just a straight line you're good enough to play for the best team because not many people can but you don't shine in there you just literally just a steady edit or you could drop down to a lower team in the league somebody who's not as good as the best and like when you're in there you're the star you're the shiner you're the one that's absolutely dominating and the best in everything what would you rather be would you rather be the person on the best team doing hardly anything or would you rather be a person in a lesser field, a lesser team, and be the star that's shining and everyone's like, wow, this guy's so good and getting everything correct. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what I'm interested in. Like, he says that uh, physicists are, are, like, the best and the geologists are kind of, like, nothing. That's basically what we're saying in the episode. But if I flipped it and said, well, 
would you rather be a physicist that sold nothing all the way in your career up until the point where Sheldon is, or turn into a geologist who then starts solving everything, getting awards and achieving stuff? Um, which one would be better? You know what I mean? That would be interesting to see. And, um, you know, only time will tell and see what Sheldon does. But I feel like he's just going to go back to being a physicist anyway. Uh, but that is today's episode. You know, good date for Raj, even though it was a bad one for Howard. Bit of a little midlife crisis for, obviously, um, Sheldon. And, um, you know... He, we didn't really see anything of Penny and and, uh, and and Leonard. They was just kind of supportive of Sheldon and trying to help him push into his direction, and uh, that was that was about it with them. It's a good episode for them in terms of uh, their relationships. Not you know not really mentioned. Sometimes we kind of mention it quite a bit, like are they are they not back and forth, are they bicker? But today, instead, it help Sheldon, help the friends, and uh, you know be interested to see if actually Sheldon goes back to work or if he stays a bit of time off because he hates not working, doesn't he? You know we've seen it when he's supposed to have his little annual leave or whatever his breaks, he can't do anything. He he just rather work all day every day because like I mentioned before, he probably do it if it's something um, that Harco loves, like being a physicist. Will he be able to deal with not doing that? Or can he move into a different field? Who knows? Be interesting. Can't wait to find out. Thanks for checking out today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please smash like. really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.